worlds have finally collided right it seems like as some of you guys know i have a show called the random show that i do where i essentially cover a lot of the la podcast scene type stuff and i'm sure some of you guys have maybe stumbled across my channel or my podcast because in the early times i used to sometimes talk about some of those things on my podcast but then i realized at the time i don't really want to blend those type things i want to leave the podcast to be more cultural to be more art focused to be more fashion focused be more nightlife focused and the things i'm generally kind of giving a shit about and then of course the comedy stuff i can kind of do on the side so that said i'm obviously really into you know nightlife and dance music and clubbing and DJing and all that sort of stuff and obviously I'm really interested in watching and keeping abreast of all the developments happening in the LA podcast scene because it's like one big reality TV show so it was pretty funny when I saw Andrew Schultz uploaded this little clip that was taken from Blondish the DJ again I'm not really a big fan of hers as a DJ and maybe not as a person as well because she was one of the flipping main culprits of all that flipping nonsense playgrave stuff back in the day and the hypocrisy of her kind of going out there playing and then posting flyers of her going and cleaning beaches it was just flipping annoying and really frustrating and really pissed me off in general that these you know you would call them close to multi-millionaire djs had this idea that you know the rules didn't apply to them they suddenly went and moved over to these fucking third world countries took advantage of their lack sort of COVID protocols played and then kind of rubbed it in our faces by showing themselves flipping with a jesus post jesus post sorry behind the decks having a whale of a time so she kind of grinded my gears a little bit but again that could be more sort of a thing of me kind of being stuck at home and being for sure i can't go outside and then seeing this flipping person person going out and enjoying themselves so maybe it wasn't even her maybe it was more so what she represented that was the issue but regardless she's a dj she's in my world i'm aware of who she is and obviously i'm aware of andrew schultz so it's pretty crazy to see andrew schultz mention her and mention going to see djs and everything that surrounded um the time that he was out and stuff so pretty much of a trip so finally my two worlds have collided so i'm going to play the clip courtesy of andrew schultz's instagram account which is as follows i was all hoodwinked bamboozled duped and double cross and be beguiled by the blondish at burning man nevertheless she's incredible she's brilliant indulging her creations just don't compliment her on, on mushies on mushrooms i guess let's play the clip dj was so amazing man i've never heard of her she was fucking phenomenal man. i was sober and she was great we went we saw her at one party and then later we saw her at an art car and her and diplo diplo who also fucking crushed her on yeah, that art car great. And for guests of those watching, this is a TikTok clip and it's a clip of Blondish essentially reacting to the video on her TikTok and then obviously Andrew shared it on his um, Instagram account. But she's in the corner eating what looks like to be a, I don't know, mango, a pineapple, I'm not sure, some sort of fruit. They were fucking killing it and I was high and fucking drunk and I tried to bestow a compliment on her. What did I, I mean, I was so stupid. You talked to her? I was like, I was like, you were exceptional. That's right? a nice thing to say. No, well, I'm not done. No. And, uh, <laughs> that's not uh, good. I go, you were exceptional. And then she waits, she kind of looks at me, she says, okay. Now, earlier in the night, when we were watching her at this party in front of the pyramid, it was beautiful. There was like this really vulnerable moment that she had where she was like, um, I really liked you guys. And then she goes, did you guys like me? I love you. Do you love me? And everybody goes, yeah, she goes, okay, I'm just working on my insecurities. He sees not insecurities, I see plain old narcissism. That's what I see. Imagine going to a gig and hearing a DJ say, I love you guys, do you love me? Like, how far up your ass do you have to be to say that to a crowd? I say, no, I don't. Play the fucking tune. Press Q, press play, or fuck off about do you love me? <laughs> So I'm approaching her with that energy, right? I'm like, oh, she's like just this brilliantly talented person that also is kind of insecure, maybe in like a social setting. So I want to come in and just make you feel so comfortable. Yeah. So I go, you were exceptional. And she goes, damn, yeah. I was like, it's like you're having a conversation. I was like, you listen to the, you listen to the crowd. And what was your favorite part? Anyway, so funny little story and comment and to be honest you actually this is something i've actually learned myself especially having covered a lot of dj news a lot of scene stuff and whatnot i've realized over the time that you should never ever 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 go up to a dj and try and talk to them like you're their friend or that you know them or compliment them in any kind of way because some of them are just really socially awkward and usually some of them just don't react well to kind of compliment because 
I'd imagine like myself also like come and become you know being an up and coming DJ there's this sense of like I won't say guilt but there is this little bit of an imposter syndrome thing with most DJs especially if you're good at what you do especially if you get a lot of you lot get a lot of praise that you're kind of a little bit ashamed that you get that praise because for the most part you're not really doing anything do you know what I mean you're just playing other people's music. But obviously, you're sequencing it well, you're mixing it well, you're reading a crowd, you're creating a story by the sounds that you're playing and soundscapes, all that malarkey. We get it, we get it. But for the most part, you probably don't deserve A, the money or the attention that you're getting based on the skill that you have. It's a bit of a weird one in that respect. But again, people love it. You do your service and it is what it is. But for the most part, that kind of nagging feeling in your head never kind of goes away. So people kind of gas you up and make you feel like you're the you know best thing since sliced bread a normal person with no narcissistic tendencies that isn't a sociopath will probably be like you know what chill relax and not really take it too well but the other people also just generally um sometimes for the most part just don't want to talk to people just don't want to talk to fans they just want to go there they want to play their tune they want to hang out in the green room do their drugs drink their drinks and go home they don't want to have any interaction with people like real interaction so sometimes when you try to talk to them it can be a bit weird they come a bit standoffish or think that they're rude but it's usually not personal it's never to do with you it's more so to do with them in terms of them just being comfortable or being willing to talk to people and fans and whatnot and i think in general also when it comes to nightlife and it comes to club culture and whatnot i always do think that there should always be a bit of a separation between the fans and the artists anyway and i don't think the artists really deserve that much of a fan base in terms of trying to get to know them obviously you should be their fans in terms of paying tickets to go out and see them and watch their shows but you shouldn't treat them like you know, pop stars or anything. They're not. There's not that much interesting to get to know about a DJ behind the scenes, especially if you kind of really talk to them personally. It's not really that interesting for the most part. They're just like you, just like you and I, but they just had the courage or the determination to get behind the decks and pursue their dreams that way. But there's nothing that makes them better than you just because they're behind the decks and you're not lesser than them just because you're on the ground dancing and getting your sweat on and so. So which is why I also kind of despise that whole like behind the DJ culture, even the green room culture, which I've obviously taken a part of in both those things, but I despise that stuff because I feel like it adds a bit of separation. It adds like a hierarchy in terms of like who's the best, who's the coolest, who isn't, and I hate that stuff completely. So usually DJs who kind of indulge in that kind of scene, I hate and I despise, but then the only exception I can think of is someone like a Ricardo Villalobos, who's kind of the king of that whole behind the decks, um, sorry, behind the booth sort of like um, VIP area thing, green room thing, cogs and kisses on the around the decks and whatnot and the kind of oh i know you you don't know me sort of thing like obviously he's the master of it but still he's such such a good dj such an, uh, an incredible iconic figure such a rock star behind the decks that i can't really you know pay attention to that stuff and of course his productions are you know some of his earlier work is out of this world but in general i hate all that sort of stuff so when i hear stories like this as fun and as cool as it is it does remind me in general that you should never ever try to get to know djs especially not as friends especially not as colleagues especially not as a peer especially not as anything you should obviously try your best just to be a fan from afar put a couple of fire emojis say this song is sick what's the idea on this one but that's why it should always stop because for the most part they're all a bit weird to be honest they're not the most um personable people to try to get in touch with and talk to and also i'd imagine it's not really their fault especially if you're like a a, a high caliber dj like a flipping blondish you're getting paid like 30 grand or whatnot you're getting paid to play an hour set somewhere in some tropical location with a really captive audience i think most people you would let that get to your head i think i played a clip on the random show about Jordan Peterson basically acknowledging and accepting that maybe he did let the fame and uh, attention kind of get to him and it has changed him some way. And I think it changes everybody. I think people that don't say it does are naive and a little bit, you know, are just basically liars. I think for the most part, if you're like a DJ who makes it late in life, let's say you make it anywhere between the ages of like 27 and 45, it's going to change you, especially sound now you're kind of quote unquote famous in your little niche. You're getting paid a high amount of money. The booking agencies and the clubs treat you like royalty. They want to take you out for dinner. They want to pay for your transport, make sure you get home. All this kind of stuff that kind of gives you an overinflated sense of self and makes you feel like you're special, which you are, of course, but still makes you feel maybe more special than you think you are. It, of course, it's going to change you, especially considering how people act around you the groupies especially the male groupies i'd imagine probably add to that because they give you a lot of attention they want to talk to you about this talk to you about that so no surprise that people act like that but in general i think 
this should be a cautionary tale to never try and get friendly with DJs ever, ever, ever. Enjoy the shows, enjoy their music, um, buy the tickets, buy the merch, um, attend, 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 but don't try to communicate or get to know them in any way, shape or form because you will get made to look like a fool if you try and say hi and, you know, try and be personable and stuff. It won't end well. I guarantee 